This is my ET5. In my previous video, I said a few flaws about it. And today, I'm not going to tell you about its strengths. Instead, I'll be showing you guys my thoughts on the latest Neo OP Plus. Seeing that a lot of you guys, well, two to be exact, are so curious about it, allow me to show you how the OP Plus really works in China. I'm Harris, you're watching my EV. To judge an ADAS, I think we have to approach it from the following angles. Now, let's start with the first one. Since the ACC is the first step for ADAS, going forward should be the most fundamental things. The smoothness of the NLP+, Plus, which is considered top tier in the world, is without a doubt excellent. But it can be a bit too smooth. Where there's a car speeding up suddenly or merging to another lane, it feels like it doesn't want to accelerate. So I have to apply throttle to make it go faster. And when the road has many ups and downs, the throttle control can have a very small chance of being unsteady. But the constant oscillation of acceleration pointed out by Tesla Beyond has never appeared in my ET5. Comparing to the smoothness of acceleration, the braking is on the other hand of spectrum. Where there's a slow car in front, it will perform a strong, determined, but not uncomfortable braking process. If you don't drive like a chauffeur, it won't be a problem. And due to the intelligent smooth stop function, it can make the braking low speeds stay as smooth as the limo stop. In terms of following distance, the NLP Plus is somewhat conservative. Here in China, most of the drivers seem always to be in a hurry and tends to follow other cars closely. And the way my car drives is basically inviting them to cut in front of me. And when others do cut in line, it will slow down and make more unnecessary room for them, which leads to more people wanting. In comparison, the steering clearly requires more skill as it needs to assess the turn and lane on its own. When it drives in light traffic, the NLP Plus is generally great. It turns smoothly, it stays in the middle of the lane, and it automatically slows down before big corners. The only thing unpleasant for me is that it slows down a bit too much. But the good news is that the lane keeping will still work when I apply the throttle. When driving a straight line, the NLP Plus is quite competent in dealing with adjacent cars that are approaching or slightly intruding into this lane, and it can always keep distance from heavy vehicles. But the system is not capable of avoiding them by using another lane, so when a front car getting too close, it can only slow down. And the chances of unnecessary braking are considerably higher when encountering a similar situation when cornering. Another thing worth mentioning is that when merging into the main road, it gets too close to the outside lane, which sometimes makes me feel unsafe and have to take over. All of the above are actually basic abilities. How the NOP Plus changes lane is what really decides if it's good or not. Judging from the maneuver alone, it's pretty satisfactory. The process is very smooth, even in corners, and like a veteran driver, it will accelerate before start to change lanes. But when I want to change lanes and toggle the turn signal, it takes a relatively long time before it actually starts to turn. What's more, it's also a bit conservative when choosing lanes. When it's two kilometers from an off-ramp, it starts to merge into the right. Even there's clearly more traffic. When I want to overtake, it gives up changing even when adjacent car behind is still far away. And on almost any elevated road and motorway, it insists on changing to the second lane, even there's a slow car. But when the traffic is light and on some certain roads, the commuting efficiency is quite high, as it can achieve continuous overtakes and even performing a maneuver that is very common in China, overtaking on the right. A perfect ADAS only exists in the perfect PPT and TVC world made by car makers. But what will the NOP Plus really respond in emergencies? Given the system is heavily relied on vision, heavy rain and thick fog is its greatest enemy. Even with one lighter and five radars, it will still ask me to take over and turn itself off when the weather is too bad. 
However, after upgrading to the latest Bion 2.0 system that has image to bird's eye view ability, the problem is solved. In those situations, it will still notify you, but the LP Plus will remain functional. When there's no heavy traffic, the LP Plus is excellent. But when there is one, I have to take over constantly. It just gets too afraid of maintaining a relatively short following distance and dealing with cars that want to cut in line. And when the left lane is empty and the right one is jammed, but it has to use the off-ramp, I also have to take over. Either it will go to the right early and get stuck in traffic, or it will never be able to merge itself into the right traffic, only to notify me to take over. Speaking of takeover, I have more to say. When encountering the gaps on the HD map, the LP Plus will turn off, leaving only the LCC. But after buying 2.0, there are already fewer gaps. When the lane marking in front of me suddenly disappears, LP Plus will also downgrade to LCC. And if there's no car directly in front of me, I also need to take over the steering wheel. And when the target lane is occupied, the car in front of me suddenly breaks, or there's construction ahead, LP Plus will also ask me to take over, but remain functional. Apart from this, I have something else to talk about. The Nomi Pilot. When it is on, Nomi will notify you about almost every situation. Sometimes it will even do that in advance. Some of you might find this constant notification annoying, but trust me, this is very important because it's the best way for the system to win your trust. As of today, the LP Plus isn't the best ADAS in the world. Tesla's FSD, Huawei's NCA, and Xpeng's Excellent GP are all better. But in terms of potential, NEO is actually the best one. On the perception, NEO has the most complete hardware, and the top-mounted LiDAR has also been copied by a number of brands. On the computing power, even if the GPU is not as suitable for ADAS as the NPU, the 4 Orin X that brings 1016 tops power is beyond enough for future upgrades. And in terms of software capabilities, NEO is the one in the lead. It's the first company in China to build a highway ADAS even with the restriction from the mobile IQ4 system, which is a black box. The subscription fee for LP Plus is around $50 per month, which is not something I'm willing to spend given the current performance. However, NEO has gifted me two years of free access, so hopefully after two years, they can offer a better LP Plus that I'm willing to pay for.